Hey, hey! So, today I want to talk about Frida's Something's Going On album from 1982. I think it's a fitting start for this category, My Thoughts, because it's really the first solo release after ABBA, uh, if that's still a thing we would say. And after all, uh, I personally think it is a good, a really good album, and I would like to talk about my impressions of the album overall, talk about outstanding tracks, and I would also like to talk about the fantastic promotional campaign uh, and the legacy, everything we got surrounding this album and the sessions. I will jump right to the end of side A, where the first half finishes with To Turn the Stone, because this is where the album really gets going for me. That doesn't mean I don't like the first four songs or that they are weak in any way. Those are very good recordings. Tell Me It's Over is a good up-tempo kickoff and I've always had a nostalgic connection to I Got Something because I first listened to it on the 1994 compilation The Voice of ABBA. And I also always liked I See Red. But for me personally, to turn the stone and the next track, I Know There's Something Going On, are really the heart of the album. To turn the stone has this magnificent atmosphere. Frida's vocals are outstanding and I really like that warm and vivid bass line and the typical Moroda synth lines and of course Giorgio Moroda has co-written this song and sometimes when I listen to this song I have the visuals from the promo video in my mind which I always liked. I know that some people generally feel it looks strange and cheap but that's because it probably was. I don't know about you but to me those visuals were always very effective and fit the tone of this song's atmosphere but perhaps that has also something to do with me being young when I first saw this video. At such an age you are always blown away by these things. There is also a very strange relation to a film called Cat People, which was released earlier that year, 1982. First of all, the film is basically about people turning into Black Panthers and if you take a look at this sequence from Frida's video and also the general feel of the background with rocks and rural landscape, you can definitely see the visual resemblance. And secondly, the soundtrack for Cat People was written and produced by no other than Giorgio Moroda, of course. Well, all of this must have been a complete coincidence, but the connections are there. Um, side B starts off with the title track, I know there's something going on. Well, it's not really the title track, is it? But almost. And is there really anyone out there who doesn't like this song? I personally think not only is it one of Frida's masterpiece recordings, but it is one of the finest solo recordings from the group, and perhaps even one of the greatest rock pop recordings that I know. There's nothing 80s about it, it is absolutely timeless, um, and there's a real epic feel to it. Threnody is another deep favorite of mine, and there are some very nice moments where Frida sings vocal harmonies with herself, Baby Don't You Cry No More and The Way You Do are again very enjoyable and are perfect soft rock, I think. And then I'm really attached to, you know what I mean, which is so emotional. But just before you think the album would end on this slow number, one final up-tempo song finishes off the record. And this is a good example for what I generally feel of the album's sequence, in that despite the different styles of songs, there is a really good flow throughout. And to end it with He Will Stay on a more positive, upbeat note is just great. This final track is another very big favorite of mine and if you listen closely, best with your headphones, you can hear those fantastic string arrangements which are especially prominent towards the left side of the stereo mix and I also have the feeling that you can hear them even better on the solo version of that song. The entire album has great production, Phil Collins is all over it. The drums just kick in through almost every track. Um, of course, there are no drums on songs like You Know What I Mean, <laughs> but it's enjoyable record from start to finish. It has 11 tracks and 44 minutes running time, but yet it never feels too long. And the whole album almost feels effortless. And if I would give it a rating, I'd say maybe 8 or 9 out of 10. The promotional campaign for this album was fantastic, if you ask me, and one of the big highlights was a 40-minute documentary on the making 
of the album. And here we got almost 30 minutes of musical insights into the making of most of the album's songs. You can see and hear the band rehearsing sections of the songs, uh, recording the backing tracks or different isolated parts. For example, the recording of the horns for Tell Me It's Over or the fantastic string sections for You Know What I Mean. And we can also listen to Frida trying out harmonies and recording her vocals. You can also see Benny and Bjorn briefly in discussing the possibilities of uh, providing a song written for Frida, which would eventually happen for her next album, Shine. And we can hear a song that didn't make the cut of the album, Shot Down, in action. We also see them mixing the songs. For example, they, they are on the mixing desk and uh, doing uh, different uh, versions of He Will Stay, you know, different mixing levels. And this is also where some people claim there's a bit of a sadness to see in this documentary. Frida sometimes seemed to be a bit reserved, even out of place. And uh, of course, this was her first solo record after ABBA. She was alone, she was responsible, um, and it was also shortly after the devastating breakup with Benny. So who can blame her? After all, when we read the liner notes on the back, and also what she had to say for the 2015 box set release of the album, she seems to have just the fondest memories of making this album, and I'm sure that the artistic spirit and energy really helped her through a difficult time and this is what you can hear on the recording. Nothing but joy and conviction and strength, even when it comes to the emotional parts. There were many fantastic performances to promote the album, not only of the singles, but also some of the album songs, like Tell Me It's Over on Spanish TV Applauso, although that was in fact a single A-side for Japan. And a great performance of Baby Don't You Cry No More, on Germany's Show Express with Frida swinging away on the swing. Uh, they also did a promo video for the track I See Red for whatever reason and there are some unforgettable visual moments on these official promo videos I already mentioned to turn the stone but we also have I Know There's Something Going On and with this promo there's this theme of taking photos and processing them in this dark room where we have the entire frame colored it red. Uh, very similar to the general feel of the album's artwork and photo sessions. And Frida could also be seen wearing a lot of red during the promotion, very fitting to the color of her hair, lipstick and fingernails. So there's a very cohesive theme to the album and its overall presentation. Just look at the title of the song I See Red and perhaps this is why we even got a video for this song after all. Or simply because it was a single A-side in South Africa. The album is in fact until this day the best-selling uh, solo album of any of the ABBA members and the first single, I know there's something going on, the lead single, was the 20th biggest selling single in America in 1983. So that's quite a success and uh, the promo campaign did pay off. I personally was pleasantly surprised when uh, I watched the first episode of season one of the American horror series Scream Queens from 2015 and very unexpectedly I know there's something going on kicked in. There were many vinyl and CD releases over the years and uh, one of the most interesting ones, at least when it comes to its content, was certainly the limited box set from 2015. It came with bonus tracks and a DVD that contains the album's documentary and all four promo videos. All of this was also released on Frida the DVD in 2005, 10 years earlier, but the DVD had also performances and interviews from Swedish TV's Casablanca and Canal 3, which are not available elsewhere. The box also came with an art card signed by Frida, a booklet, and an exclusive 7-inch single of I Know There's Something Going On backed with You Know What I Mean on the B-side. Generally, there are not too many bonus tracks that we can collect and add to our collection surrounding this album. There are two versions of He Will Stay, the solo version, and also an alternate mix that was accidentally released on early pressings of the 2005 CD release. This mix lacks the backing vocals on the first chorus then we also have the single edits 
of to turn the stone and I know there's something going on and that's basically it. So there are no live recordings. I always wished she and Agneta had done solo concerts in the 80s but that just wasn't interesting for them anymore. However, there are two performances of I know there's something going on on French TV, one on Champs-Élysées in 1982 and the other on Gala de l'ONU in 1984, where you can hear her singing live over the full backing track, basically doubling her vocals. If you want to have some more songs related to this album, but non Frida, you could take a listen to Thomas Ledin's version of the song he wrote, I Got Something, entitled I've Got Something, on his album The Human Touch from 1982. Frida's album came out in September that year, and Lady's album in October 82. So I'm not entirely sure if he specifically wrote this song for Frida or what the story around it was. Perhaps someone knows and can let us know. You can also listen to Giorgio Moroder's re-recording of To Turn the Stone on the album Solitary Man from 1983, a collaboration with singer Joey Esposito. Finally, you can listen to the original version of You Know What I Mean from Phil Collins' 1981 debut solo album Face Value, which was a huge inspiration for Frida during that part of her life and not only helped her overcome the divorce with Benny, but inspired her to do something's going on. And the final number, Here Will Stay, was actually recorded by Sonia Jones in 1980 for the UK qualification contest for the Eurovision Song Contest, but finished 11th out of 12 entries. Curiously enough, the B-side of that single was a song called Head Over Heels, although of course not the ABBA song of the same title, which didn't exist until one year later. And then there is the original demo recording of the outtake shot down in action floating around, the demo that was sent to Frida, not her own recording. If you really want to squeeze the possibilities to include another song on your bonus selection, you could also add Frida's 1981 solo live performance of the song Fire and Ice uh, from the show Liti Grande Europe, which is available on Frida the DVD, and it somehow fits the rocking tone of the album but anyway, this performance and the live shows she did for this TV series gives us an idea of how an 80s concert of Frida could have looked and sounded like. And these shows were highly praised at the time, even to this day. So at least we got something of the sort. Finally, we can definitely not forget to mention the remixes of I Know There's Something Going On, which were made in 2015, basically in connection with the release of the limited box set. Here we got five remixes of the title single that were released digitally, two of them even on 12-inch vinyl, and they are definitely worth to check out. I really enjoy them. Also, this was in fact, as far as I know, the first and only time that remixes were done to any ABBA or solo songs after the fact. So yes, we got some remixes uh, in the 80s for the ladies' solo albums, and even one rather clumsy one for One Night in Bangkok. And uh, surely we got remixes for Frida's Super and the Tag and Agenda's My Coloring Book and A. But those were all made and issued as part of the original album releases. These five remixes were made 33 years after something's going on. Well, when this album came out around the end of ABBA, the album title Something's Going On or I know there's something going on, had a strange ambiguity. And well, today it is very fitting again, yet in a completely different way and certainly more optimistic. Something's going on.